Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashwini Kumar and welcome to this 2 minute video revision series in which I will be talking about all the major topics of human anatomy in just 2 minutes. So for today the topic is the radial nerve. So without a further ado, let's get on with this. Well, we know that radial nerve, it leaves the axilla and then it crosses the spiral groove to come in front of the lateral epicondyle and after that it divides into two branches. One is a superficial branch of radial nerve which is a cutaneous nerve and the posterior interosseous nerve which runs behind the interosseous membrane and supplying majority of the extensors at the back of the forearm. Radial nerve in the axilla, it supplies triceps. Radial nerve in the spiral groove again supplies other heads of triceps. Radial nerve supplies one of the wrist extensor called as ECRL, extensor carpi radialis longus above the lateral epicondyle. Important thing is above the lateral epicondyle and then remaining extensors are supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve. The vulnerable site for the radial nerve injury is the axilla, the spiral groove, lateral epicondyle or there could be injury to posterior interosseous nerve like in radial head fracture. If the radial nerve is injured in the axilla, then everything supplied by the radial nerve will be gone and therefore there will be elbow flexion because tricep involvement is there, there will be wrist drop and there is a finger drop as well because all the wrist extensor and finger extensors are also involved. If the injury is in the spiral groove, then the tricep is partly involved, therefore there will be weakness in elbow extension and we still have the wrist drop and the finger drop. If the nerve is injured in front of the lateral epicondyle, this time tricep is completely spared and ECRL is also spared so there is no elbow flexion and there is no wrist drop or you can say there is a weakness in the wrist extension here. So finger drop is the main feature to be seen here. But if the radial nerve is injured or there is an injury to the posterior interosseous nerve branch of the radial nerve, in that case again the finger drop will be seen but this time the difference is that in upper three cases, the above three cases, there will be a sensory loss in the dorsum of hand but when the injury is to posterior interosseous nerve, there will be no sensory loss as superficial branch will be spared in this case.